All right, we're going to do some more Sokotoa problems here. And uh, in this first example, we have a missing side. So for missing a side, first thing to do is just to check to see what sides I have. And for this problem, I have the hypotenuse, which is your 87. And the x is your adjacent. So I don't have anything on the opposite side, so I don't really need to use the opposite for anything. Um, the a and h, then which one of these functions uses a and h? That would be ka or the cosine. So I'm going to use the cosine ratio to solve for x. So I will set this up as the cosine of 24 degrees. And that we know is always equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse every single time. But in this case, we don't know our adjacent, so we're going to solve for that. So now in my calculator, after I do my, use my cross products, I set up my cross products here. And when the variable is in the numerator, you end up with a multiplication. So you have x times 1, or x, is equal to 87 times the cosine of 24 degrees. So you can either look up the cosine of 24 degrees in a table, or most people now would take their calculator and they would type in 87 cosine 24 degrees. Um, and then make sure that, of course, you're in radian mode. And, uh, or not radian mode, excuse me, degree mode. So I make sure that I'm in degree mode. And 87 times the cosine of 24 degrees, I'm typing it in right now, is 79.5. So x, in this case, is 79 and 5 tenths units long. So does that look to make sense in my picture here? And that certainly seems like it's going to be less than the hypotenuse, and it would be actually opposite of a 66 degree angle, so that shouldn't be too much smaller than 87. Okay, we'll do a few more here. Uh, next one, I'm missing a side again. So the first thing to identify is what side am I missing? Well, opposite of my 90 degree angle is always my hypotenuse. That's my missing side. And opposite of the angle I'm using is my opposite side. So in this case, I'm missing, or I have my O and H. So I'm going to use the SO, or the sine ratio, the one that uses OH, SO. So the sine of 50 degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, 17 over x. Set this up as a proportion. Same process. Use your cross products to solve. And many of you that are doing your homework know that when the variable's in the denominator, I end up having to divide to solve for x. So this would be x times the sine of 50 is equal to 17. Now I want to solve for this x here. So I end up dividing both sides by the sine of 50 degrees. And if I divide by the sine of 50 degrees, I'm running out of space over here, sine of 50 degrees, sine of 50 over sine of 50 is 1. So that means your x is equal to 17 divided by the sine of 50 degrees. OK, so sine of 50 degrees, that's just some value stored in a table or calculator. And so I'm going to take my calculator and divide 17 by the sine of 50. And I came up with 22 and 2 tenths. OK, I'll take that back to my triangle. I'll look at it, and I'll see if it makes sense to be that. It's uh, the hypotenuse, so it should certainly be longer than 17. It is. It looks like it makes sense. Next question here, we're looking at the um, finding an, an angle. So a process is still starts the same. What sides do I have here? 
Well, I don't have my H in this case, so I have my O. That's opposite the angle I'm looking for, 46, and 18 is my A. So which one uses O and A? That would be the TOA, which is the tangent. So we'll set up the tangent of some angle, X, I don't know yet, is equal to 46 divided by 18. Now, you could look up 46 eighteenths in the table, or you could look it up using your calculator, using the inverse tangent. So if I type in the inverse tangent of 46 eighteenths, that will look up the angle that corresponds with that ratio. So I type inverse tan 46 divided by 18 and I get 68.6 degrees is my x. And that looks about right if I look at the picture and just take a peek. Now some of the pictures actually that you come across aren't perfectly drawn so uh, you kind of got to be careful a little bit when you do look back at the picture sometimes, but in this case the picture looks pretty good, so it looks about right. Uh, the last one is an application problem, so I'll take a minute to read this. An airplane flies three degrees off course for 400 miles. How far away from the correct path is the plane? All right, well, let's see here. Let's say an airplane is supposed to fly. Here, I'll draw an airplane here. This would be kind of funny. Draw some sort of airplane. Okay, there's my airplane. It's supposed to be flying this way, let's say. However, the wind or something blew it three degrees off course for 400 miles. So that means it's flown at an angle it did not want to three degrees off course for 400 miles. How far off course will be the measurement of 90 degrees from where it should have been? So I want to know this value right there. That's how far off course it should be. See, the airplane is now here when it should have been right there. So how far off course is the airplane? Well, what values do I have here now? 400 is opposite of the 90, which is my H. And 3 is opposite of the, or x is opposite of 3, so that's my O. So O and H use the sine ratio. And so we'll set up the sine of 3 degrees is equal to x over 400. Okay, put that over 1 use my cross products, my variables in the numerator here, so I'm going to end up multiplying. And so my x times 1 equals 400 times the sine of 3 degrees. Take my calculator and I type in 400 times the sine of 3. 20.9 miles. So this plane flew 20 and 9 tenths of a mile off course, which looks to be about right if I look at the picture. That's probably about 20. All right, so there's a few more examples that uh, hopefully will help you out using our right triangle trig uh, SOHCAHTOA. So that's it. Thanks.